Good morning and happy new year. Welcome to our first Connect online service of the new year. Um, join us in praying blessings to our Connect kids and teachers that are resuming school tomorrow and join us as we enter into praise this new year. This next song we're going to sing is called Another in the Fire. And as we start this new year, would we just believe that there is another in the fire with us? That whatever comes our way this 2021, that God is with us. He's never left us, not in 2020 or not this year, not in the future. He's there by our side. He's walking with us. And let's just find hope and peace and comfort in that as we start this year. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between 
where I used to be and it's wrecking me I know I will never be alone It was another in the fire You standing next to me It was another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I the 
joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Before we receive the message, we would like to encourage you to give. If you feel compelled to do so, there are three ways you can. Online at www.connectedmonton.ca forward slash give or via e-transfer to info at connectedmonton.ca and lastly by mail to P.O. Box 31024 Nemeo Centre, Edmonton, Alberta, T5Z 3P3. Happy New Year to all of you that are watching online in your houses. Uh, it's a, a privilege for me to being allowed by you to come into your room, into your living room, into your bedroom, whatever you are watching, and you now share the message of God with you in this first Sunday of 2021. After the experiences of 2020, I understand that lots of people are uncertain about what 2021 will unfold and it's you know it's understandable um, friends as we start 2021 i would like to share with you uh, today something that i believe that will help you to look forward in 2021 and the new year and face the uncertainty um, that eventually we are facing or will be facing because we don't know what 2021 uh, you know um, unfolds for all of us and uh, if you apply some of these ideas that I'm going to share with you, um, I'm certain that you will overcome that uncertainty and you will have peace and you will be victorious through Christ Jesus. In the Old Testament, um, there is a story of a man that needed to find courage in face of uncertainty and it's a very well-known story in the book of joshua chapter one we find that story it's about the, that new leader joshua that was about while well, he was taking now over the leadership of the people of israel and in joshua chapter one and verse six it says be strong and courageous for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Think of Joshua. You now, as he prepared to lead the Israelites into the promised land, the, uh, the land of Canaan, a place overrun by, you know, their enemies. Although God promised them this land years and years uh, before. And the journey to obtain the promised land was a long journey. It was a hard journey, it was a difficult journey, and filled with uncertainty. Perhaps that's why God reminds Joshua on the verse before the one that I read, on verse 5, it says, As I was with Moses, the, you know, the former leader, so I will be with you now, in the future. I will not leave you or forsake you. So be strong and courageous, and keeps going on verse 6. God knew Joshua's secret concerns, and so he spoke uh, to the fear in Joshua's heart. The same God who encouraged Joshua also wants to encourage you today, my friends. He understands how easily fear and anxiety can paralyze anyone, forced out of their comfort zones and into circumstances behind their control. We are all like that. You know, when we need to face something new, when we go out of our comfort zones, we feel anxiety and we feel certain uncertainty. And God understands that. And God knows that. He understood that Joshua was feeling that kind uh, uh, you know, of fears and uncertainty. So, friends, listen to me today. No matter... How uncertain you may feel, the outcome of every situation is known by God. Probably don't know what the future 
you know, oaths and faults for you. But God knows because God is already in the future. And he knows what the future, you know, brings to you. So no matter the uncertainty that you may feel right now in the midst of your circumstance as we start the new year, the outcome of every situation, it's known by God. God is not going to be taken, you know, by surprise with any circumstance. And God promises to never leave us or forsake us. For those that draw near to him, he will draw near to them. We, as his children, we are never alone. If you are a children of God, he, you, know, you are not alone right now. In the midst of your circumstance, in the midst of whatever the future will bring to you, you will not be alone if you are a children of God. God will be with you. But if you aren't, a, a, a children of God, if you don't have a relationship, a relationship with God through Jesus Christ yet, you can start this new year accepting Him in your life as your Lord and Savior, and you will, you will be certain that we'll never be alone because the Holy Spirit of God will come to dwell inside of you. And you will know, you have that assurance in your heart that the future, it's you know, it's in God's hands. And when it's in God's hands, it's good. It's good because it's all good. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, I know the plans that I have for you, plans for good and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and the future. That's what God has for you. So, how do we deal with uncertainty? There is three things that I would like to share with you today. First, you acknowledge your limitations. Second, you lay down your expectations. And in third place, you pick up God's declarations, God's word for you, God's promises for you. So let's take a closer look at these three steps and discover how to incorporate them in our daily lives as we keep going, you know, during 2021. First, acknowledge your limitations. Let me read for you another ver two verses in Exodus Chapter 17, verses 11 and verse 12. Um, so, Exodus chapter 17, 11 and 12. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. Aaron and Ur held his hands up, so his hands remained steadily till sunset. Standing on a hill with a staff over your head, it's not a, a, strateg a strategic way to win a battle, every general, every you know, uh, 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 army leader would say. And yet, that was essentially Moses' plan when he instructed Joshua to go and fight a powerful kingdom. But uh, his actions during uh, this fight not only helped the Israelites defi to defeat their enemy, they also illustrate two healthy ways to acknowledge your limitations and uh, your uncertainty in different situations. First, it shows us this episode here that we read in Exodus with Moses and two people helping to, uh, hold, up, uh, to hold his hands up. We need to cling to the one who knows your future. As long as Moses held his staff above his head, the Israelites, they were winning. But as soon as he lowered it, you know, they began to lose. By lifting his staff, Moses symbolically acknowledged God. God that was always with them. And uh, he was not alone. And he was, he was not in control. God was in control. So he acknowledged that God is the only one that knows the future, is the one that everything, everything under his hands and in control. So like Moses, when you find yourself in the middle of a battle, and you know, uh, <clears throat> look to the situation in front of you and observe what's going on around you. But don't let that stop you from clinging to God's authority and, per, uh, and pursuing what is promised to you. Go to God. You know, sometimes we try to find a solution for the circumstance right away, and we forgot God. Go to God first. 
Go to God and let God help you and guide you. So cling to the one who knows your future. Second, you know, allow trusted people to come alongside with you and partner with you. As the fight, you know, kept going, Moses' arms weakened. And he could not support the Israelites' army without help. So that's why his friends, they stepped in. They came to be on his side by holding him up, his hands. They helped Israel achieve the victory that God prepared for them. Moses, he wasn't created to endure hard moments alone. And neither are you. Neither am I. What if your current limitation is actually an invitation you know, for people to partner with you in the God-glorifying story he wants to tell through you and through your circumstances? Think about that. The victories achieved in uncertain seasons are rarely due to our own strength. They are, they aren't, uh, they are a result of... Instead, they are a result of clinging to God and relying on others as well to support us. We alone can't do much, but together with good friends, uh, you know, that can support us and partner with us, we can achieve more. And when we acknowledge uh, that, you know, we will see the difference. It is the faithfulness of God that sees us through the storms of life. And we acknowledge His faithfulness. We create space, basically, for God to show up in our lives and show off in our weaknesses. When we are weak, God will show His strength. Another thing that we need to do to handle uncertainty, we already saw one. The first one, we saw that we need to acknowledge our limitations. And the second thing that we need to do uh, to overcome uncertainty, we need to low down our expectations. Let me read for you another verse again in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 1. It says, when the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. For under something years, that's how long the Israelites waited for God to deliver them from the slavery in Egypt. But after they left Egypt, God didn't take them directly to the promised land. No, instead, they camped at the base of a mountain while God instructed Moses to give those, pass those instructions to the people of Israel. But, you know, it took them more than 400 years waiting for God to deliver them from the slavery in Egypt. But after 40 days, the Israelites, they got frustrated. Their delayed expectations led to poor decisions. I'm going to repeat. Their delayed expectations led to poor decisions. So they reject God and pursue whatever pleased them. They want other gods. So they ask Aaron to build gods for themselves. You know, and the same happens with us. You know, when we have higher expectations, we get frustrated when we don't get the things that we need or the things that we want. If you ever felt frustrated by an uncertain season that lasts longer than you anticipated, you are not alone on this, my friend. We can become so focused in our disappointments that we forget God is still in control of everything. That's why it's important to remember that you, you're waiting, uh, you know, this time of waiting during this season, it's never wasted. God is working something. God is preparing something. Even though the Israelites couldn't see it at the time, God wasn't withholding His promises from Him. He was preparing them for it, for the promises. <laughs> so if you find yourself weary from waiting, do what, do the same that the Israelites forgot uh, to do, you know, Look for evidences of God's presence and look back on what is already done. When you, you know, look back for what God already did in our life, give us strength. You know, give us faith to keep, you know, believing, to keep going forward. 
okay? So look around to see God's evidence that God is at work in your life. But sometimes we are so busy that we don't have time to look around. We forgot about God. We just, you know, get interested and, and, and focus into deal with the situation and find a, qu a quick solution. And we forgot that God is in control of everything and he has the power, you know, in his own hands. God's timing may be different than yours, but his faithfulness does never waver. Your waiting may be preparing you for the plans and purposes God has for you. Like I already mentioned, it's, you know, God has good plans for you. He plans to, to help you, to give you hope and a future. So wait upon those, you know, promises of God. And that brings me to my third and last point. So in, in, in order to handle uncertainty, we need to pick up God's declarations. In other words, we need to grab God's word into our life. We need to grab his promises and hold you know, those promises in our lives. And this is so, so, so important, my friends. L again, let me read another verse from Joshua chapter 23 and verse 14. So Joshua, he gathered all the Israel and, his, and he says, you know, with all your heart and soul that not one of all the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. People that are watching me right now, look back and see how God has been faithful in your life. See, recognize the goodness of God in your life. All of the promise that God promised, you know, he Always fulfill those promises. Not one has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. So keep holding into God's promises. Keep grabbing God's word into your life. God's declarations. And declare that same word into your life, into your situation. As we start, you know, living this new year. Joshua spent most of his life enduring adversity and setbacks and disappointments. And yet, he never stopped believing that God would keep his promises. By the end of his life, Joshua saw God's faithfulness come to pass, which is why he told the Israelites to recognize and remember God's promises. He was always faithful. God is faithful, my friends. God is faithful. The thoughts you fill your mind with, the thoughts you fill your mind with are crucial because what you cling to influences your worldview. I'm going to repeat this because it's so important. Whatever you are feeding your mind with, you know, going to determine the outcome of your thoughts, going to de determine, you know, uh, the way you see the world around you. That's why we need to feed ourselves with the Word of God, with God's declarations. If you choose to dwell on God's promises, you start to recognize God's blessings during uncertain times. Plus, trusting that God will redeem you uh, from your present pain and He keeps you to walk forward in faith and keep on fighting. As you walk forward into 2021, Reflect on some of God's promises, on God's word, and let them transform the way you think. God will sustain you. God's peace will guard you, your heart. God will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. God is your refuge and strength, your help in times of need. In all things, you are more than a conqueror because God loves you and he already conquered for you at the cross of Calvary. God will never leave you or forsake you. God's perfect love casts all, all of your fears. Nothing can separate you from God's love. God's not done with you yet. God is not done with me yet. God is not done with us yet. Put all of your concerns, all of your uncertainties in a box, okay? Put it in a box and then give that box over to God and ask Him to replace your worries, your anxieties, your uncertainties, you know, with His promises. And remind yourself about the many, many, many promises of God from, for the different circumstances you are facing. There is a promise. So 
put all of your concerns into a box and give to God and leave it with God. And then, you know, trade that box with your concerns by the promises of God. Whatever you face in the weeks and months ahead, remember that nothing you experience is uncertain to God. Nothing that you're going to face, it's new to God or it's unknown to God. He was at work in your past, is here right now in your presence, and the old 2021 in his hands. Hold fast to his promises and trust that he is good. So probably you are watching and you say, but pastor, I, I understand what you're saying and I like what you're saying, but I'm not a children of God. I don't think so. I am. I I'm not sure, you know, if you never made a decision. To receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, probably are not a child of God yet. The Bible tells us that we need to believe in, your heart, in our heart and we our, with our mouth we declare that Jesus is Lord. So if you recognize that you are a sinner, if you recognize that you need Jesus in your life, you need the love of God, you need to recognize in your heart and then proclaim with your mouth. So I would like to invite you right now, wherever you are, if you want to make that decision and, and live under the blessing, living under the promises of God for 2021, okay, to come to God and right now and ask God for forgiveness and, and repent of your sins. So I would like to ask you, wherever you are, make a quick prayer, a simple prayer. You know, you can say something like I'm going to say and you can repeat if you want or use your own words. Saying something like this, Father God, I thank you for your love, for your mercy. And I want to thank you for Jesus. Today, I recognize I am a sinner and I repent of all of my sins. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Come and change me. Make me a child of God. Give me peace. Give me love. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you made that uh, prayer from the bottom of your heart, welcome to the family of God. Welcome to Connect Church family. You are part of the big family of God all over the world. And we are here to help you. We, are, we would like to walk with you. We would like to help you on the, your next steps. You know, myself or someone from our team will be in touch with you. And uh, if you don't mind, go on the comments if we are watching on YouTube or Facebook. On the comments, you know, use that emoji to ends up, you know, like praise ends and put it there. It's a sign for us that you received Jesus and we'll be in touch with you. We'll try to get in touch with you or you can send us an email as well to info at connectedmonton.ca. Info at connectedmonton.ca saying, I accept Jesus today and I want some help. I want some clarification. I, 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 I need to understand a, a few things that uh, does make sense in my mind. We'll contact you. We'll be together. We'll sit together when possible. We'll have a coffee when possible. But you have material that we can give to you and help you in this new journey with Jesus. And let me tell you that if you made that decision today, it's the best decision that you ever made and probably the best decision of 2021 for sure. And we'll see the difference in your lives. We, Connect Church family, we want to end this first service of 20, 2021 declaring a blessing over you and your family. So I'm going to ask our worship team to come to the stage and they're going to uh, uh, sing a song for you. Uh, and that song, it's taken out of the scripture. It's called the Aaronic Blessing. And they're going to sing it over you. Just receive it. If you are watching with your family, you know, I would like to ask you something. Give hands to your, you know, around your family. You know, grab your hands together and receive the blessing that we're going to declare over you. Basically, the team going to sing, but it's exactly the word of God in number chapter 6, verses 24, 25, and 26. So grab hands together and as a family, receive a blessing. If you are alone, that blessing is for you as well. Okay, just lift up your hands and, you know, be in touch with the Holy Spirit of God and receive a blessing over your life. And my my desire is that you will be a blessing. You will be blessed to be a blessing to others. So we are blessed to be a blessing to others. So receive it right now. So this next song we're going to sing, it's right from the Word of God. 
And it says in the book of Numbers, chapter 6 and verses 24 through 26, it says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. So that's this encouraging message from the Word of God that we, we want to pass on to you. And may we remain under the blessing of God because Almighty God, He is saying these words toward all of us. So may we remain under His blessing because that's power when we stay under His blessing. It's for you, it's for you, it's for you, it's for you. 
that blessing because that's our blessing our prayer for all of you not just for the connect church family that are watching but everyone that is watching even if it is your first time you are blessed we pray blessings over you so we're going to finish this service today um, with a prayer but before i just want to want, want to let you know that we are still you know waiting for news from the ahs and the governmental authorities about eventually coming back or not in person next week we are not sure yet but if not we'll be here online at 10 a.m okay next sunday and uh, eventually in two weeks from now we hope and pray that we'll be back in person uh, you know here in this place uh, but if not, Sunday, next Sunday at 10 a.m. will be here, YouTube and Facebook for another uh, online services. So let's pray as we finish this service. Father God, we are so thankful for the opportunity that we had to come together, although apart, but praising and worshiping your name together. The name that is above all names, the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we start this uh, new year, 2021, with so many uncertainties regarding the pandemic, Lord, Lord, we know that you are above uh, everything. You are in control of everything, Lord. And our trust is in you. Our faith is in you. Our, 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 our sight, it's focused on, on you, Lord. Although we thank you and we thank, uh, you know, for the science and the, uh, what they are doing with the new vaccines and the treatments and helping people. We thank you, we thank you for the, the doctors and, and, and nurses and all the people that work in hospitals to help people, Lord. But, Lord... My faith, it's not on a vaccine. My faith is in, on you and on you alone. Um, so, Lord, uh, help us to remind ourselves that you are God, the almighty God, the only true God. And we worship you and we praise you as we live this new year. And as we're going, Lord, to be the recipients of your blessings during the 2021, because you already prepared the blessings for us. You are already in the future. You are preparing the day of tomorrow. You are preparing the day after and the next week and next month, Lord, for us already. And we just receive it. So we embrace this new year with an open, wide heart arms knowing that god never leave us never forsake us and whatever it comes we will go together we are not alone you will walk with us so i pray blessings over everyone that are watching right now at home lord if there is people they are you know facing physical situations some sickness or disease i pray blessings i declare the word of god by the stripes of jesus you are already ill i declare god's declarations over your life just receive the blessing just receive the promise over your life by the stripes of jesus you are ill receive it receive it by faith in the name of jesus amen 
Thank you for watching us and see you all 10 a.m. next Sunday here on Facebook and YouTube. Bye and God bless you.